Today's video has been sponsored by Chatbooks. I realized in the last video you guys couldn't see all the snow that I worked so hard on, so here it is. Uh, enjoy it, appreciate it. I definitely spent way too much time and money doing that. Uh, but for this week's video, before y'all come at me with your pitchforks for doing yet another burger recipe, especially one from Joshua Weissman, you guys selected this over on my Instagram story. It's not my fault. If you're a fan of the Burger King Whopper or any cheeseburger, you cannot deny this thing looks absolutely delicious as per usual with Joshua cheeseburgers. Except this time, we are making absolutely every single component from scratch, from the sesame seed buns, to the ground beef patties, to the mayo, to the pickles. Everything is completely homemade, which is gonna be quite a bit of work. So let's get right into this one. There's really never telling how long recipes like this will take me. It might be a couple hours, it might be a day or two. It has the potential to cause me a bit of stress, especially this season. But one thing that's helped relieve some stress this holiday season are my friends over at Chatbooks. Chatbooks are the modern way to hold on to the best moments and memories. It's a fast and affordable way to get photos off of your phone and into your hands. From high quality gifts and cards to full on photo books, you can easily add, edit, and arrange your favorite photos to create beautiful products. As you can see, I went for the yearbook to forever cement some of my favorite recent memories. And starting at just $15 plus free shipping, making a photo book with chatbooks is both super affordable and beyond easy. And if you don't believe me, their easy to use photo book app has over 100,000 five star reviews. So do yourself a favor, click the link in the top line of the description, download the chatbooks app and get 20% off of your first order site wide with my code HOLIDAY20. Or you can just scan the QR code on the screen right now. And Thanks so much to Chatbooks for sponsoring today's video. But okay, if you would like to make Joshua Weissman's homemade Whopper, you will need some vegetable oil and bread flour, some white vinegar and whole milk, granulated sugar, ketchup, garlic powder and Worcestershire sauce, kosher salt and some bay leaves, a big old hunk of chuck steak and some water, coriander seeds, dill seeds, cayenne pepper and Aleppo pepper, some beautiful boneless short ribs and fresh dill, Dijon mustard, bread machine yeast, a fresh lemon and some eggs, some mustard seed and garlic, some mild cheddar slices, American cheese slices, and because Joshua's editor forgot to include it in their description and therefore I forgot to show you it. You also need some butter and black peppercorns, sesame seeds, and then your two toppings, some iceberg lettuce that has been sliced razor thin, and of course, some slices of yellow onion. I've honestly lost count at this point, but this one's gotta be up there for one of the highest ingredient counts we've ever used. And I find it pretty amusing that it's for a burger, of all things. I'm pretty sure in the next video, Joshua's gonna have us tilling the soil to plant the tomatoes to make your homemade ketchup with. And even though I was able to find basically all of the more obscure ingredients for this one, the bread machine yeast, the uh, dill seeds, the Aleppo powder, the only thing I could not find was the amylase. I checked all of the vitamin stores and the pharmacies around me and nobody had the pure version of it that you would use in cooking. But it's basically a digestive enzyme that you kind of naturally create in your mouth that is used in this application as a bread conditioner to soften up the dough. But to test if my hypothesis is correct, raise your hand if you either own amylase or you were gonna go out and buy it if you were gonna remake this recipe. No one? Good, I thought so. That makes for an even better and more accurate test to see if this one is worth making for you guys at home. At least that's what we'll tell ourselves is the reason. But to catch you up to speed here, I whipped up my buns by making the dough, letting it rise three times, once at room temp, once in the fridge, and then once you have them cut down into their little dough balls. I'm assuming it's from the yeast that we're using, but this was a super active dough. It rose even higher than the average YouTuber's ego. And to finish it, it gets brushed with egg wash and sprinkled with sesame seeds, baked at 375 for about 14 minutes, and brushed with melted butter, and you have one of the best bread products you will ever consume if you choose to make them. Next up, we had to make some homemade pickles, which I was kind of excited about, because I've only ever done this once, they didn't come out the best, and it kind of made me feel like Brad Leone throughout this process. Now Joshua calls for a seedless English cucumber, I wasn't able to find those, I found some Kirby cucumbers instead, which are literally just the cucumbers that are used to make the whole pickles and the spears and stuff like that. Try not to lose the tip of your fingers if you're using a mandolin to cut this, and then whip up your brining liquid. That's gonna be the water, vinegar, some salts, the little satchel of uh, seeds. 
And surprisingly, you don't have to let these pickles sit for hours or even days. According to Josh, once this pickling liquid comes back down to room temp, they're basically ready to eat. Obviously, they all pick up more flavor the longer you let them sit, but you don't need to let them sit for super long. Next on the to-do list is the homemade garlic mayo, and Joshua, although you're the homie and I'd love to do everything exactly as you do, I don't really feel like sitting here whisking this for a half hour and burning out my arm. That's what you normally have to do to make an emulsion by dripping in the oil and super vigorously whisking it into your liquid so it emulsifies. I'm gonna take the Kenji Lopez Alt route and throw this all in a cup and then blend it and call it a day. If you have never done this, I will leave Kenji's video down in the description. I cannot recommend it enough if you use mayo for sandwiches or whatever else. It comes together so easily in a couple seconds, and with all that fresh garlic and lemon juice in there, it tastes so much better than your average store-bought version. Moving over to the spicy ketchup. Once again, thank the high heavens, we don't have to grow or ferment anything. This is actually probably the easiest component. And that's because you just mix together your ketchup and cayenne, your Aleppo powder, garlic powder, and Worcestershire sauce, and just let it chill out in the fridge until we're ready to assemble the burger and let all those flavors and seasonings things kind of permeate the ketchup. And it'll have plenty of time to do that because in case you forgot, we now have to grind our own hamburger patties. I used equal parts, about a pound each, of the chuck roast and this really beautifully marbled short rib. I chopped everything up to one inch cubes and let it sit in the freezer for a few minutes to firm up, as well as all the meat grinding attachments. Always remember, the colder, the better, usually, for this procedure. And then I put all the beef through the machine and watched it squirm out of there faster than Tana in the reality house once FoosyTube showed up. Now this ground beef was looking pretty gorgeous. It was a really nice ratio of fat to lean beef. So I formed up a patty just on a little piece of parchment paper to make it easier on me, seasoned it up with some salt and pepper on both sides, and then slapped it down on my grill. This is optional, I assume. You can cook it however you want, but we are making a Whopper, so this should give us the best, most accurate version of what we're going for. This is gonna get two slices of two different kinds of cheese. I melted the American right on there on the grill. We're gonna wait to add the cheddar slice until we start assembling this, oddly enough. And thankfully, the only last thing we have to do is slice open one of our buns, give it a toast on a stainless steel pan with some butter, make sure to come seconds away from burning the bun and ruining the whole thing, and finally, now it is the time for assembly. Your freshly ground burger patty is gonna get topped off with another slice of cheese, your lettuce, your onions, your pickles. Two layers of the homemade mayo on both sides of the bun, a nice generous dollop of the spicy ketchup. Every single time I believe Joshua has reached his burger peak, he turns around and tops himself again. And I think this one's got the potential to, so let's give it a shot. This really does smell just like Burger King, probably because of the grilled patty, the sesame seed bun. Do I really have to go through everything? We all can guess, this is incredible. Uh, from the homemade bun, I don't know that it's better than the last Joshua buns I've made. They're definitely on par. Uh, the fresh burger patty. But once again, as I always say, the thing that takes this to the next level is the garlic mayo and the spicy ketchup. Whenever Joshua puts his spin on sauces, condiments, it just elevates it to that next level that not many other foods reach. This is incredible. I don't know that I like the grilled patty any more or less than an average smash burger that's typically my favorite kind. As long as it's got that really dark, like deep Maillardy crust, it's gonna be just as good, regardless of how you cook it. This is better than the Baconator, better than the Big Mac. The only one that it's not better than is the In-N-Out Burger. That one is just pretty much close to untouchable. Overall, absolutely incredible. So once again, major props and good stuff, Joshua. Thanks so much for watching today's video. Don't forget to leave me a big like if you enjoyed it. It helps out the channel a lot. Thank you to Chatbooks for making this one possible. Let me know what you'd like to see me make next down in the comments. Follow me over on Twitter and Instagram. And other than that, have a fantastic weekend. And I'll see you right back here next time. Peace. Super lazy. Try and make a meal tonight, they ain't pay me. Try and supersize my life with my A team. Yeah, our style wasn't wavy, but we had a vision.